I'm thrilled to be your guide today through this extraordinary gathering tailored for AI enthusiasts and professionals like yourself. Before we delve into the exciting agenda, let's take note of some important details. DevPalooza is proudly hosted by Analytics India magazine in association with AI Forum for India, powered by NVIDIA. We have some fantastic speakers lined up for you today, along with a hands-on workshop and a coding challenge. So without any further delay, let's kick off this meetup. For our first session of the day, we are honored to have with us Manu Joseph, a distinguished data scientist at Walmart Global Tech India. Manu is a self-made data scientist, bringing over 10 years of cross-functional expertise spanning analytics, software engineering, and supply chain consulting. His extensive experience includes collaborating with numerous Fortune 100 companies, driving digital and AI transformations, particularly in the realm of machine learning-based demand forecasting. In addition to his professional accomplishments, Manu is an active open source contributor. He has developed and maintains an open source library called PyTorch Tabula, which simplifies deep learning for tabular data, making it accessible to all. Today, Manu will be leading a session titled Imagination Unleashed, revolutionizing children's storytelling with AI. During this session, we will explore the captivating world of AI-driven storytelling, and Manu will guide us through the exciting journey of creating a groundbreaking children's stories podcast using cutting-edge AI technologies. We will delve into how language models, text-to-image, and text-to-audio models synergize to bring enchanting tales to life. So ladies and gentlemen, can we please put our hands together for Manu Joseph. Yeah, uh, good morning. So today, <clears throat> sorry, I might have a few bit of cough and everything because it's Bangalore. Uh, but yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, revolutionizing children's storytelling with AI. Um, a very good uh, intro is already given, so I just keep that part. You can probably get to the next slide. Um, before we get started, at least legally I'm required to say this, that my presentation comments and opinions are provided in my personal capacity and not as a representative of Walmart, where I work now. Uh, they do not reflect views of my of Walmart and are not endorsed by Walmart. All right? So uh, this is the agenda for today. Uh, what we're going to do is first we're going to look at, uh, have a little bit of an intro about this podcast, just so that we get an idea about what it is. Uh, or what we're talking about. Let me look at the overall architecture behind scenes. Um, do a small bit of deep dive, as much as our time allows us to do. Uh, and just quickly close out with a, a snapshot of the performance and the uh, Q&A. And we'll have a Q&A session, right? So now, um, so yeah, what is LPT or Little Pajama Tales, right? Little Pajama Tales is uh, is a podcast um, tailored for children. It has like five to 10 minutes uh, bedtime stories. Uh, which children can listen while as a, as a routine for as part of their like, daily routine. Um, so before we start, I'll we just spend a minute to just have a flavor of what uh, the podcast is. Is the audio connected? Now it's time to transport you to a magical land, a twinkling village deep within the cuddles of the frosty North Pole. Listen closely as a tale of kindness and joy is about to unfold. Deep, deep within the frosty cuddles of the North Pole, there was a twinkling village named Frostwood. And in Frostwood, there lived a very special man. His name was Nicholas. Now, Nicholas was no ordinary man. Oh, no. Yeah. So this is, is an excerpt from one of the ep episodes, which um, is going to release soon. Uh, but I just wanted to get get that feel, as in this is what it sounds like. This is the podcast that is there, etc. Um, and as you know, when you have to have a a podcast like this, you will need to have a team of people. Um, can you go to the next slide? All right. So we need somebody to write the story and the prompting. Uh, we need somebody to do the the narration. Right. We have excellent artists like uh, Sean Prince and Chloe, Chloe Woods with us. Uh, we also need an audio engineer, which uh, who would make sure that the quality of the audio has studio studio level quality. Uh, and we also need somebody to do our digital marketing because we need to kind of put the word out, right? Uh, but although we typically do want to have all of these people, uh, this particular podcast is sort of an experiment 
where we're saying, let's replace all of these folks uh, with AI-assisted tools, so that just uh, somebody like a show producer, probably me or my friend, can handle the whole process uh, without having all of these other folks working with us. <coughs> so we have uh, GPT-4 handling our story and scripts. We have uh, a low audit AI uh, who's handling our narration. Uh, we have a tool called uh, Ophonic, which is handling the, the audio quality. And then we also have ChatGPT for our digital marketing. So I'll get into these, how we are going to use all of this. Uh, so before this, uh, go to the next slide. Yeah, so before we get into the details, I'll just spend a little bit of time to, to kind of like show why it is relevant. Um, so I have a six-year-old son who loves to hear stories and like, will, he wants to hear a story every night. Uh, so uh, after some time you get, you, know, you, you run out of stories, right? You don't have anything else to say and then you keep repeating the whole thing. I was talking about this with my friend and he said that he has the exact same problem because he has his own son he also wants to hear stories all the time. So while we were discussing, we thought, like, why can't we just use technology to help uh, not just my son or his son, but children around the world? Uh, so if we can use technology in a, in a meaningful way and influence a lot of folks, a lot of children um, who are the future, uh, it will be a very fulfilling experience. Right? Uh, so looking at, like, why, why do you even want, to, uh, want children to listen to stories? Uh, there's a lot of benefits. I'm just listing a few here. Um, it stimulates your imagination, aids the brain development of the, of the child. Uh, it enhances the language skills. Um, they learn new words. They internalize it. They learn a lot of life lessons because most of our stories are lessons which are put into a narrative. Uh, and that is also a huge value add uh, when you want to instill your morals and values to a children. Uh, and it also strengthens family bond because you're spending quality time with your son or daughter every night, right? Then that's like a very, uh, it increases the bonding in the family. So among all the other benefits are just a four or five things. And this is why we <coughs> thought we will start this out. Uh, and, and podcast was the most easiest way to deliver this to a lot, large audience, right? We don't need any infrastructure. We can use other folks' infrastructure. <laughs> so, yeah. APIs, and it also has its own storage, uh, and it kind of uh, has has an important element of human in the loop, um, because you know um, generative AI in the current state is not perfect, right? And especially when you're dealing with um, uh, kids, and like, safety and quality are paramount. And so our design has uh, human in the uh, human in the loop uh, heavily. Uh, so I'll just quickly. <coughs> take you through it. So you have a shop, show producer, uh, which can be somebody like me or my friend or say anybody who has some ideas about what the show should be. Uh, and like even in that part, you can actually riff with uh, ChatGPT and create ideas. But <clears throat> so once you have the input, right, I, I know what kind of story I, I need to be. I just need to give a few inputs to uh, a story generating prompt. Uh, we'll get into all of that later. But a story generating prompt, which uh, will be sent to the GPT and then we'll get the uh, story back or the uh, GPT will write the story for us. Uh, once we get the story, right, we also want to uh, kind of extract a few information and metadata about the story. Uh, so things like um, the, what are the different characters in it or what are the different settings that is happening. Um, <coughs> so all of these things are also extracted from GPT. So we take the story. Uh, bundled with the prompt and send it back to GPT, and we can get it as a structured output. Uh, so we take that as a metadata. And also, if you look at it, like when you look at a podcast format, right? Like if it's a story, even if it's a story, you don't really just start off with the story, right? You have something to kind of the showrunner would be kind of talking about it, and then kind of ease into a story. So that the, you need a script for that, and that script is also something that um, GPT provides. So we take all this metadata, take all the story that is generated, bundle it together, and send us a call to the API, and it'll generate the 
the script for it, right? One part is the intro, and the other part is your outro. Uh, so what? Um, um, <coughs> yeah, one more thing that we all, we want to instill or reinforce is the morals of the story or the lessons of the story. So at the end of or each story, we have like a one or two minutes minute discussion about what the story was about and what kind of values it is coming in a child friendly and kid friendly way. So all of that script is actually generated by GPT and it kind of goes and gets stored in the DB, which is currently a couch DB, which is a very easy thing to do uh, because the scale is not much. And it resides locally in my laptop as well. <laughs> uh, so this, uh, now we take these stories uh, and uh, actually the script, uh, we send it to lower at AI, which has a lot of um, good voices, uh, very human-like voices. Um, <coughs> And some of the, the voices that we've chosen for this uh, are more suited for storytelling, but they also have other things like marketing uh, oriented voices, et cetera. So the audio narration comes back from it. And uh, that audio narration, although it's good quality, uh, it is not high quality. It's not like studio level quality. You can he still hear, if you listen intently, you can still hear a slight grainy noise and et cetera, because it's a, at the end of the day, it is AI generated. But then we have a tool called Auphonic, which does the work of an audio engineer. So you send it to the Auphonic uh, API, it gives you a very clean, uh, studio-looking sounding uh, kind of an output. <coughs> so now uh, this gets stored in our DB. Uh, and also along with this, right, we also, in a podcast, you know that you also need a cover image. Uh, so that's also something that we generate with, with AI, with stable diffusion, uh, the, the initial prompt to generate an image actually comes from GPT, and that goes through uh, the stable diffusion. But then we have the human in the loop there, um, more heavily, because the um, image generation is not, is prone to more problems than uh, text generation. So we have a lot of uh, back and forth there. So the human or the show producer would kind of tweak the prom prompts the right way to get it. So this is the entire architecture, right? So, <coughs> so this, um, uh, the interface or the UI is just a grad AI, grad IO uh, UI in my laptop, not moved it. But it's it's something that makes it easier for uh, somebody like me or my friend can kind of use it to create different episodes. Um, the end-to-end -end workflow, we can do it through that UI. Um, yeah, all right, we can move to the next slide. So yeah, let's uh, look at a little bit deeper about into uh, GPT-4 and how we make it to, I mean, how we get it to write stories. Uh, so th the entire orchestration, so like I told earlier, right, there are uh, a lot of different prompts that's happening and there is a, like, we, there's a chaining that's happening. We take the output from one, one prompt, give it to another one, uh, get some uh, structured data like your metadata which is extracted out of it. So all of this orchestration is being done by something, a library called Langchain. Uh, it has a, it's an open source library, uh, very good implementation. It kind of wraps around your, um, your LLM applications and makes it like a easy for you to use and it makes it structured. Right, so basically all the orchestration is done through Langchain. And then <coughs> when we're generating stories, right, there, there are two ways you can generate stories from uh, GPT. One is you can generate brand new stories. We can give the, uh, the a few details and it will write a story for you. Uh, we can also get popular stories out of uh, of the saved weights, right? Like your um, like so stories like Cinderella and Snow White and all, it'll be already in the encoded in the weights of the model. We can just extract that by writing a, writing a prompt. Another way is we we have an existing story. We can really paraphrase that uh, as well. Uh, and and why do we want to do that? Is that this is a podcast, uh, a five to ten minutes, which is really tuned for children. So we can take any story, we can give it to the with the sufficient prompt, it will make it into a short version of the story and it will make it in a uh, optimized for narration, right? Like you have pauses in between, you have the, the dramatic buildup. All of that would be done by uh, the scripting of the model. Uh, and lastly, we can, like I told you, right, we can also use it to extract metadata. We have models, uh, like I told you before, the, the image prompt the prompt to generate the image is also coming from uh, GPT, at least the initial version of the prompt. So all of this is something that is being done by GPT. Uh, and uh, how do we do all of this? Is that? So the key is prompt engineering. 
So prompt engineering, you, a good mental model that I came across recently uh, is that, so you have this, um, this large language model, right? It's, it has compressed knowledge from across the internet into uh, a space. Let's imagine there's a space, right? What we want is actually a particular part of that space. Right? I don't want the, the model to say some things which is offensive. I don't want the model to say uh, very high uh, like vocabulary which would not be uh, kid friendly. So I need to kind of trim away all the space and get it get the output from a smaller space of that whole space, right? So prompt engineering and even fine tuning to one extent is essentially doing that. We are we are asking the model to ignore all of these other spaces or other tokens that it can generate and kind of focus on one particular uh, thing. So, um, yeah, this next slide. Yeah, this is just a code, right? This is um, this is basically how. Um, Langchain uh, supports the whole prompting. So the key key things to note here is that uh, there is something called a human message prompt, and there is something called a system message prompt. Uh, so the system message prompt is something which is uh, shared or bundled into the prompt for every call that we make to the API, and uh, the human message prompt is something which changes every time. And how this is being used is is that. The system message prompt would typically be something which assigns the role, or we assign a role to the model. You saying that you are this, or you assume that you are so and so, so that we are already coming out from a larger space to a smaller space, uh, and then you you know plug in all the details, right? The story, what length do you want, what is the age range that you want to target, etc., and then you uh, plug into the model, right? So at this point, I'll probably take a small aside. Uh, and talk about prompt engineering a bit more because recently I came across a video on YouTube. There must be a thousands of them, but then this kind of struck with me uh, because the way that they have um, formulated the whole uh, or had a structure towards the prompt. Next slide, please. Yeah. So, how do you write a good prompt? Right. It is definitely a dark art. Uh, there's no set rules to it, uh, but there are some guidelines which seems to be working for a lot of people. Um, so you kind of start the whole thing with a persona. You say that you assume that you are a senior product managing ma product marketing manager at Apple. So you're assigning a persona to the pers to the model, and then we want it to do something. Or before that, sorry, there is a context that you have to give to the model. Right? Like, what is the information that you uh, want to pass to the model so that it can do the, its task uh, in the right way? Uh, that's called this context. So you're saying that okay. You have just unveiled a latest Apple product in collaboration with Tesla, uh, the Apple car, and received some free orders and 200%. So now that you have given the persona and the context, now you want to ask the model what you should be doing. Right? One is the task, like I should write something to your boss, Tim Cookie, <laughs> uh, sharing his positive news. Um, and then you want to also tell the model what you want to write, right? Do you want to write an email or do you want to write a message? Do you want to write something else, a story? So all of that becomes uh, the format that you're asking the model to do. Uh, normally, this much would still work uh, for your model. But if you want to, want to be more specific, you can also always give like an example uh, of, of what the output should consist of, right? So in this, it's saying it, the email should have a TLDR. It should be. It should have the project background, some quantifiable business metrics, and it should end with some thanks of thanks to the product and engineering teams. So once you're given this information, then the model knows. Okay, the output. These are the things that they want to be want to include, and because of the instruction fine tuning, it kind of follows that instruction. And the last one uh, is also another optional. Like if you want to specify the tone of the language. You can you can say that it can be clear and concise, or it can be witty, or whatever that you want to uh, the output to be. So once you have this framework, um, at least a mental model, it kind of becomes easier to uh, write these prompts. Incidentally, uh, <laughs> we we wrote all the prompts for the for the application, and then we came across this uh, this slide, uh, and it kind of related, right? We were using almost the same structure when uh, when writing the prompts for the application. All right, and yeah, the link for that is right there. Um, I'm not sure how the sh shares should be shared, right? Yeah, so yeah, it'll be shared, and then it'll be uh, the link is right there. Good. 
All right, okay, next one. So yeah, now we will talk about, briefly talk about uh, this tool, Lowboded AI. Um, it's not the only text-to-speech um, tool on the market. Um, it's been there, I mean, Polly has been there for a long time, but then, uh, uh, I don't know, my, I feel Polly output is, Polly is from Amazon, Polly output is a little robotic in nature. Uh, but then there are uh, newer companies coming up like Eleven Labs, um, Lowboded AI. They have a much more human-like voices uh, from a text-to-speech uh, point of view. Um, really, the, the only reason why I chose uh, Lowboded AI was I found a couple of good voices which is suitable for storytelling. Uh, because storytelling, you want to be having a low energy and soothing voice. Uh, but most of the voices which are currently out there are very high energy, marketing-oriented. Uh, voices. So, but Lobo had a couple of things which were very mellow. So that's why that's the only reason why I chose this. Um, and this has, um, and of course, there is a human in the loop to check for safety issues, because uh, the pronunciation of some words may not be right, especially when you are uh, talking about regional words. Um, because recently we did an ep episode about uh, a story about Diwali. Um, and uh, <laughs> AI struggled really to get the word Diwali right. Um, and things like jalebi and gulab jamun, it uh, slaughtered. So eventually I removed those words because it was not getting right. Um, but then again, with some tricks, you can get some things to work, right? You change the spelling. Like instead of saying D-I-W-A-L-I, -I, you say D-E-E-W-A-L-I or L-E-E. -E. You try different uh, pronunciations to get it right. Uh, but then, yeah, I mean, the AI is trained on English and not Hindi. Uh, so yeah, so that uh, human in the loop check is going to be there. And you can use this in both ways, web UI as well as API. All the players, right? It's not something unique for them. Um, yeah, we can go to the next slide. Yeah, so <clears throat> along with the content of the story and uh, the narration, we also want images to be generated for many cases. The most, most prominent use case is the cover image of the podcast, which needs to be there. And that's something that is coming from uh, Stable Diffusion. So all the images that you see in this slide is also from Stable Diffusion. Uh, so the, and the starting image prompt is generated from the GPT, but uh, we kind of iterate on top of it to get a better, better ones, right? Because um, um, in the image generation lingo, they call it artifacts. So when you generate something, you can see something weird, some face will be squished and things like that, yeah. So that's very difficult to get over. So you kind of keep changing the different prompts to get, uh, things which are not there. There are negative sampling, and I mean, negative uh, words that you can give to encourage not to do that. But it is, again, like it is a dark art, right? It is, you need to try a lot of things. Uh, but one trick that you can use to get like similar looking images is that like if you look at all the images uh, that I've shown, right? It has a same kind of a vibe, right? You have uh, like something warm and cuddly, soft colors. Uh, you have some stars and magic and all of those. So that is something that you can maintain uh, by using prompts. So when you, you have, when you have a prompt, let's say the first image that you generated, so you have some parts of that prompts, uh, prompt carried forward, right? You keep the same prompt and keep editing a few, a few lines so that you get different images, but in the same image language. And which is really important because you don't want all of your illustrations to come out like very randomly different and all that, right? Uh, it is sort of like a template. So um, like the main image that, uh, that I have, I have a few things in there. So I have all of the images and the feel, I kind of remain the same and I change like what I want. Uh, instead of a girl sitting on the couch, I can move it to a family or parent reading it. So then it will still create a new image, but in the same design language. Uh, so yeah, that's stable diffusion. You can go to the next slide. And this is the Ophonic, right? It's, uh, they themselves call them as an AI sound engineer. This is just a screenshot from their site. Uh, they have a lot of different features. I'm not going to go through all of them, but mainly the one that I use a lot is uh, noise and reverb reduction um, and loudness and, and some cleaning acti activities, which they have a lot of other options as well. Sorry? Reverb as in uh, when you talk, sometimes a slight echo comes in, right? Reverberation, yeah. So yeah, 
this is they also have a good API integration that you can just send and it'll get an uh, we'll get an output out of it. All right. So yeah, yeah. Finally, we have um, ChatGPT, which is our digital marketing and consultant. <laughs> so. Um, like if given the right information and context, right, ChatGPT can be uh, a very good partner for your your things. So like there are different ways you can use this, right? So suppose in the beginning of the beginning phases, if you want to uh, get more ideas, right, or uh, suppose I'm planning a new season, I want to get ideas, right? I can actually riff with um, ChatGPT to get some ideas and then kind of talk about it, etc. So this kind of like. Otherwise, recently we did a season. The current season is about uh, holiday stories, holiday theme stories from around the world. Uh, so normally it would take me a lot more time because I would have to go search through Google, find out different holidays from different countries, and then find the stories which are related to them, and then get the whole thing done. But with ChatGPT, that process becomes very smooth. I can kind of talk to them. Uh, it will do the hard work of searching in its own database and get the answer. And then I can make my own call. Right? At the end of the day, human judgment will be there. So at my own call to get the, um, the, the programming right. And it can also act as a, um, as a content generation tool. Like if, if I want to uh, have some post on uh, social media, I can ask, actually ask ChatGPT to say that, okay, this is what I want to do. This is just an example, it's too small to read, but uh, I can ask it to generate a script for a short or a reels that I want to have. I, I know that I'm gonna say that I'm gonna start off with this thing that I'm, uh, okay, I'm something. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm just asking the model to just complete it. And in a, in a particular fashion, in a particular way, right? And this model does it perfectly. It gives you an answer. But the good thing about that is, if you're not satisfied with the answer, you can just ask it to change it, right? If I want this change to something else, I can just tell the model or just tell the chat GPT, it, like, this is not right. I want this also. I want to include the link. It will just give you the link and the entire thing. So it kind of saves a lot of time in you writing the content which, which suits the whole mood of the whole thing, et cetera. So what I have is basically a, a chat, uh, Chat GPT, you have different chats, right? You can different chats. So you have a chat which is uh, which initi which is initialized with the right role. Right? I've told Chat GPT that you are assuming this role, and uh, this is all the things, and all the discussion that's happening is in that same thread. So that whenever, if I want to uh, refer to something which I've done long time ago as well, I can still do that. I can just say that, like I told you last time, I, you need to do this, and it'll remember that, and then it'll start doing it. So it's a very helpful kind of a uh, tool. Although at the end of the day, posting to social media is still something that we do manually, but uh, the content generation and the idea generation is uh, greatly accelerated by this. Mm. Yeah, I think that's probably the last slide, I think, right? Oh yeah, sorry, just one more, I forgot. So yeah, we launched this as an experiment um, because we we also wanted to know whether people would be accepting of uh, of something which is totally AI generated, right? So in none of our promotions or marketing language, we've not used AI anywhere. Uh, so <coughs> so now probably we will start using because the experiment's done. So it is uh, right now. It is uh, we have listeners in 19 countries. Um, most of them are in India, as because all of our friends are in India. Uh, but there's a lot of people from North America, Netherlands, UK, uh, Belgium, Denmark, even Tanzania. So the uh, when you see the that the the podcast is being uh, streamed uh, in a lot of the different places, we we get that uh, fulfilling feeling, right? We get something which is being used a lot of places, and probably a lot of kids are listening to this uh, this podcast, and which gives us a little more drive to move forward. Yes. I think uh, we can. Yeah, this is. Oh, sorry. This is the um, QR code. If you want to scan and subscribe, and let's check this out. But yeah, um, questions and anything. It's not a startup. It's non-profit it's podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So uh, currently. Uh, Although the, the loaded AI and other people are supporting other languages, uh, we've not got into that regional phase yet uh, because we wanted to keep it a little global. Uh, like we wanted uh, the audience to be 
across the world. But we do have a little bit focus on India now because we have a lot of listeners. So uh, something like the next season, probably something like stories from India, right? We have a lot of in stories within our mythology and folk tales. So something like that. Uh, but apart from that, not, not any immediate plans to do it very regionally. Yeah, one thing, one funny excerpt is that I was talking about the problem with Diwali earlier, right? So if I use an Indian accent voice from Lobo, it gets all the words right. Uh, but it's just that I didn't use the voice because it's very, it's not a very soothing voice. It was a very harsh voice. But yeah, so it's not something that you can't do it. It just needs the right kind of training to get it. So you're talking about which version of the model should be used, that kind of thing, or? Like yes, for example, chat GPT. Uh -huh. hmm. No, no, it's not, it's not. Because the, the API is fr not free to use, but it is open to use, right? Even for commercial purposes. So like, this is not a commercial uh, venture, but even if I'm using for a commercial venture, I can still use it because that license. You just pay the yeah, all I need to do is pay the money. Um, yeah, so Auphonic has a free ti free tier um, for to two hours two hours a month, um, but. All the others are, yes, paid. But it's not that costly, because otherwise I wouldn't be doing this as a side project. So. Right, so right now it's in my lap laptop. <laughs> but eventually, yeah, we'll have to move to cloud. Wonderful initiative, Manu. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Got it, got it. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a valid point, yes. Um, just one thing is, right now, the podcast is sort of the age group that we're targeting is like uh, seven, six, five, four, 
like toddlers and right out of toddler stage, uh, because the stories are also like that, right? It's not something that uh, a high, slightly grown up kid would enjoy. It's a two minute story. Things like the first season was mainly about uh, fairy tales like um, you know, Cinderella, Snow White, and all of that. And even the current season is about uh, holiday stories, some legends, uh, but still told in a kid friendly way, right? Something as a conversation or something like that. And one other thing that we also want to do is uh, move kids away from screens. And that's why we chose podcasts as a platform and no video or anything like that. Uh, so that's, like, we, we believe that kids, at least in the kids phase, they should not spend a lot of time with screens. They should be exploring the world and stories. Yeah. Thank you so much, Manu, for that engaging session.